Welcome to today's webinar uh, from Toradex about our new Apalis TK1 with the NVIDIA Tegra uh, TK1. Uh, my name is Daniel Lang. Um, I work for Toradex here out of the office in Seattle. Uh, later in the webinar, I will be joined uh, by Dominic. He's a senior software development engineer um, in our headquarters in Switzerland. And he will uh, talk a little bit uh, about technical thing and how to get uh, the TK1 uh, running. Before we dive into the presentation, a couple of organizational stuff. So at the end, we will have a Q&A, so you will be able to ask us questions and we will answer that. Uh, so you should see in your webinar panel a chat or question uh, box. You can just type your question in there. While we do the presentation, we may already answer a few uh, while we do the presentation and then the big Q&A will be at the end of the presentation. So. The presentation will first do a very short overview about Toradex, then we will do an introduction about uh, the Apalis TK1 and the TK1 SOC. Then you will hear about a possible uh, application and demo, so we will have uh, uh, some videos and some uh, stuff people do with the TK1. Then uh, it will get more technical, uh, how to get started, then Dominic really will show you how to install the latest images, how to work with the jet specs, and so on. And then at the end, uh, we will do a question and answer uh, session uh, live. So very short about uh, Toradex. So Toradex was founded in 2003 in Switzerland. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we spread over the whole world, as you can see. Uh, so you should find uh, somebody in your time zone or very close uh, to your time zone. Uh, you can call the office and they can talk uh, with you. Toradex is specialized in um, ARM and better computer module or uh, system on modules. Our customer in a wide range of vertical, including industrial automation, medical, automotive, avionics, test and measurement, digital signage, and so on. Basically everything except like the typical uh, consumer super high volume uh, things uh, we, we don't do. Uh, our SOCs are from NXP, from NVIDIA, which we'll cover today, uh, and from Marvel. Uh, we have in-house uh, support for Linux, so we do Linux by ourselves, we do uh, Windows Embedded Compact uh, still, actually not on the TK1, but on some of our mo other module. And we, for some selected module, we started now uh, supporting Windows IoT Core. So that we also have a webinar over that uh, if you're interested. Um, as I said, software and hardware is in-house, so if you have any trouble, and many times it's not clear if it's software or hardware, uh, you can just get in touch with us and we will help you. So about the product, I was already about Toradex, so I'll get started about the product. We have two main product families of computer modules. Uh, one called Colibri, it's a small SOD form factor module. Uh, we released the first one in 2005, so they're around for more than 10 years. There is a wide range of modules. We also have very uh, low cost models starting at $24, including RAM, flash, SOC, every power management, everything on, on the module. And we also have some uh, very low power uh, module. And they have the typical, let's say traditional, embedded interface, like SPI, I2C, and so on. And all the modules in that family, they're pin compatible. So if you design a carrier board uh, 10 years ago, you still can plug in the, the latest module. Then on the other hand, we have the higher performance uh, Apolis module. And actually the TK1, it's our Apolis module. Uh, so that's fit in that group. And you can actually see it, it's the, the module on the top. Uh, this is an MXM3 based uh, module from the form factor. And it's really talked a little bit more on how high performance has also higher bandwidth interface like PCIe, Gigabit, Ethernet, USB 3.0 and other high-bandwidth interface for display and camera. 
for the module, you also need a carrier board. Uh, here on the left side, you can see on the top our evaluation boards. It's really big, uh, but you have easy access to all the pins, and it's really good for prototyping, and, and especially if you have hardware, you have to connect that, and that's a good board. Then also the iris in the middle, it's also uh, from Toradex. Uh, I hope if the connector you get a feeling uh, for the size, so it's, it's much smaller, can be used as a, as a single board computer, has HDMI, uh, and so on. But we also have third parties carrier board for our Colibri uh, family. We already have a, have a big range from third party companies providing carrier board for our models. For the Apalis, we just begin now to add the few one, and here you can see one uh, from a company called Diamond System. It's currently in a verification mode and I hope that will uh, appear soon on our uh, website. But most customers actually design their own carrier board. Uh, so for all our carrier boards, there's open hardware, so all the reference in Altium uh, file format or PDF uh, it's all available. You can go on our website there and you find a lot of tools and help uh, if you want to design your own carrier board. Then if you talk of our website, very short, something Toradex is famous, it's really our uh, developer resources and how we help uh, you uh, developing on our product. So we have a developer uh, website, developer center with more than 8,800 articles, we update that daily. We have a quite new community forum, uh, it's very cool if you know Stack Overflow, it's a little bit in inspired by that, so uh, very uh, good overview. Uh, you can also email us uh, directly, of course, and as you have seen in the slides before, we have support offices around the world. They all have phones, so if you're in trouble, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and give them a call. And then, of course, you have video tutorials and webinars like the one you, you are enjoying at the moment. So now, uh, we look at the hardware. So first, we look at the module level. So the Apalis uh, NVIDIA TK1, it comes with 2 gigabyte of RAM, uh, 8 gigabyte of eMMC uh, flash memory. So it means you don't need an SD card or an SD or anything externally to run your operating system, your program from. You, you can do that directly from that uh, onboard flash. It also has a, has a wide temperature range. So our early prototypes, they have a little bit a smaller temperature range, but the uh, the volume product has a uh, minus uh, 24 to 85. And short about the interface, so it basically supports the interface of the Apalis module. I don't go through all of them, but here are some uh, highlights. You only need a single 3.3 volt power supply uh, uh, to get it running. You have uh, USB 3.0, two lines, you have HDMI and LVDS for displays. You can connect 4K displays. Actually, you have also display port and embedded display port. And then you have camera, uh, a CSI interface, so meet CSI, you can connect up to three cameras, with PCI, e, Gen 2. You have uh, two high performance CAN interfaces, which are actually realized with a K20 microprocessor. Uh, this is actually a Cortex M4. And it's freely programmable, it's connected via SPI, so if you don't want to use it for CAN and you have other uh, low latency, stuff you want to do, you maybe could even use that. Then also maybe mention, compared to our other Apalis modules, we did not connect the parallel camera interface and the parallel LCD. So if you have a parallel LCD on your current carrier board, uh, please get in touch with us so we can uh, look for a solution. So now talk a little bit more about the SOC. So uh, it comes with a 4 plus 1 ARM Cortex A15. So we say um, a 4 plus 1 because normally you have 4 cores in there running up to 2.2 gigahertz. However, if you don't fully load the system, there is an additional core. It's also a core A15, but it's designed for low power. So the system will automatically migrate. Uh, your processes to the single A15 core to preserve power. So you can really see at the design from that system, they were really uh, considering a uh, power consumption. Runs up to 2.0 gigahertz. And I think one of the nicest features of the TK1, and really one which is a big difference to uh, more or less all the other SOC, is the very strong GPU. 
with 192 at CUDA cores. We will look at that a little bit later closer. You can connect 4K displays, uh, and it also has a quite strong video decoder. You can do 4K in H.264. You can do up to four simultaneously a full HD screen, and you can also do H.265, which will load the GPU, so there's not everything done uh, in hardware, but you can have a full HD uh, stream in H.265, so this uh, newer codec, if you like. You can also encode 4K. Uh, videos up to uh, 24 frames or 60 frames at full HD. Then here a little bit more about the, the, the GPU. Uh, so it's 192 CUDA cores, means you can really use it for general purpose computing. So you can use it to render very nice graphics, but you can also do for signal processing, uh, for deep learning and so on. And so just general calculation. A uh, nice thing also you have unified memory, so the memory is accessible from the CPU and the GPU directly. On a traditional PC you have a graphic card which is connected via PCIe and all the connection, so if you want to share data, look at the CPU you need to process a little bit and then the GPU and to back and forth you always have to copy it over PCIe to one side and then back. So with the Tegra you don't have that, you can access both together. So Depending on your algorithm, that can give you a, a, a big boost. Even maybe the CPU is a little bit uh, slower than your i7 and, and the GPU maybe too. Then what we uh, support for framework and feature, you have the full OpenGL 4.4. So it's not just a, a mobile uh, GPU. So you have the full OpenGL 4.4 like you know it from a, from a PC. You also have the OpenGL ES 3.1. You have CUDA supported, you have OpenCV, a very popular framework for uh, computer vision. And there we have uh, optimized libraries uh, for Tegra. So you can just replace your OpenCV uh, uh, functions with this optimized one for Tegra. We also support uh, NVIDIA vision work. Then Let's talk a little bit about the application. Uh, we think uh, the TK1 is interesting. I hope you have also a lot of ideas, but here a few things we see uh, people doing and what we expect. So one thing which we already got quite some requests for is TK1 clusters. So you not just use one TK1, you use several uh, together. Uh, it was not very obvious for me why, why you want to do that, but uh, we talk with people and it's really a unified memory and that you have so many uh, CPU cores uh, together coupled with the GPUs that give for some algorithm that's very ideal. So people really want, want to basically have servers full of, of these uh, Apollos modules. We already have a third party doing uh, carrier boards, which you can plug up to four Apollos modules in it, and then you can couple them together even more. Uh, so if you're interested in a cluster and you want to have a carrier board with several uh, Polis module, maybe don't want to do everything by yourself, get in touch with us and uh, we can introduce you to this third uh, party. Then another application we expect is uh, uh, signal processing, that it replaces FPGAs and DSPs. Uh, so the GPUs, are, they have very good if you can parallelize your work and many times you can do that in uh, signal processing. Uh, if you have very good uh, floating point performance, it's a little bit less deterministic than FPGA, where you really have it in hardware, but it's easier to program. Uh, I think it's easier to find people, which can be teached on CUDA, or I mean, it's very close to C, uh, so then they can uh, VHEL or all these uh, uh, tools for FPGAs. Uh, it's easier to migrate to other GPUs and so on. And there is already applications uh, like in, in, in radar application. Also the unified memory here, again, uh, a big advantage. But I mean, that's a hotly discussed topic, uh, what's better in which use case. Also, it's not always the cheap use, uh, but it, it's many times it, it can be. So we, we think we will see, uh, see quite some uh, applications there. Uh, then the next thing, uh, a demo. Uh, so let me show that. That's about a user interface done uh, with Qt, so something a little, little bit more traditional. 
And also, I, I didn't say that here, so in the chat window, so we will show you videos. We had problems in the past that not everybody could see the video. If you can't see the video, just click on the link in the chat uh, window and you will see the YouTube video of these clips. They're, they're all pretty short, so you can watch that on YouTube. So I, I started here. I hope that works. And so you see that the iris carrier board uh, with the Apollis under the heatsink, and that's a Qt UI uh, doing a, a 3D Qt 5.6, I think, for that demo. And you see it, it's quite advanced, lot of uh, lightning, lots of parts, but that works all very smooth. Uh, on the TK1, so I think even the most advanced user interfaces uh, will be good. It also was run on a uh, full HD. Uh, the demo was provided by KDAP, uh, a partner company of Toradex, uh, so they can help you with Qt, C++, OpenGL stuff, so if you want to have an application uh, with Qt or want to have a really fancy user interface, they can help you uh, with it. Uh, here on the slide you see a little bit what they do. So they're quite ex experienced, they also do Qt training, uh, if you look uh, for training, we also work with Qt directly, so because it's a very uh, popular uh, framework to do UIs. They also uh, uh, maintenance the, the Qt for uh, Windows Embedded uh, Compact, so if you have any questions in that direction. So next, talk a little bit about uh, deep learning. Uh, just very short what it is, I mean the tech to go much too long, but I try to make it a very short, the idea you, you may already know, uh, but uh, traditionally if you want to achieve something like detecting a, a, a cancer cell in a human tissue, you have a picture of a tissue and it's to uh, find the cancer cell, so you read a lot of know-how uh, on what you have to see when it's cancer, uh, then you need a specialist in uh, computer vision, to do edge detection, to check on color, and so on. So it's very complicated. You have to write a really detailed algorithm. With machine learning, you do it different. You just have a lot of data, maybe from the couple years where uh, people manually detect the cancer, and then they mark that's a cancer, that's not, and, and so on. So you have a lot of pictures, uh, a lot of information. You just feed that in a generic algorithm, I, I say here. There are also different ones, but more or less it's the same concept, and then the computer will figure out by himself how to detect cancer. That's kind of the whole idea of machine learning and, and deep learning is it's one, uh, one part of that. So with that deep learning there were some uh, recent remarkable results like Google's DeepMind, so also NVIDIA's uh, car uh, called BB-8 uh, running DaveNet, so that was a car, it learned driving from end to end, so there was not guys programming, detecting the the, uh, the street, then how do I need to brake, how do I need to steer, so they just teach the car basically driving and it learned everything from end to end. If you go on the internet there are some pretty funny video and you see when it learns at the beginning it's not so good and does some mistake. It's also the ImageNet uh, competition, that's a competition where you try to uh, describe picture or, or know what's on picture. And the latest algorithm, uh, there's our uh, deep neural network running on GPUs, they outperform humans. All that stuff really shows that GPUs are ideal to run this uh, a deep neural network. Then very short how it typically looks if you um, uh, do that, so you have all the lots of data, let's say all, all the picture which are marked, what it is, then you feed that in a big computer, typical that's cloud computing, so Microsoft, Amazon, Google, they all have uh, services for that where you can really train that, it needs a lot of uh, performance, uh, Microsoft, uh, so Microsoft, NVIDIA also provides high performance computer you can put on your desk like the, the digits, but they're heavy computer, need a lot of power, it's not something you would have um, mobile, they're also expensive. So after you trained it, you get a trained model, that doesn't need that much performance anymore, but it's still typically in the cloud, uh, for example on your cell phone if you do voice recognition or something like that, normally it transfers some data to the cloud, uh, it comes in a trained model, detects the picture or the voice and then uh, send it back. But now with the TK1 you can actually take that trained model and put it on 
on the TK1. So you don't need that connection to the cloud anymore. You don't need the cloud computing. If you're a UAV, if you're underwater, if you're a ro robotic, if you're maybe medical uh, device like ultrasound uh, somewhere, you may don't have that reliable connection. Uh, so you can do that everything on the module. Uh, and that's uh, uh, pretty cool. Uh, I will show you here a small application which was realized uh, with deep learning. It's a traffic sign uh, detection uh, demo from our partner Ant Micro. So you should also, uh, you can watch it on YouTube or I can uh, show it to you here. So you see their stereo cameras, a CSI camera connected to this carrier board. Our module is actually on the bottom, so you couldn't see that. But it's on a rover, it's a demo we also had at Embedded World. And you can now see the camera detects actually uh, street signs and it reacts so five, it drives slow, ten it drives faster. Uh, if there is arrows, uh, it will uh, steer. That was all done with just showing them all the signs and the uh, neural network were trained and then it was transferred uh, to the TK1. That demo was provided by Ant Micro. This is a long time partner that did many uh, hardware and software projects for our customers. Uh, they can do custom carrier boards if you don't want to do it by yourself. They provide software services, so if you want to have some CUDA optimization, OpenCL or machine uh, vision, deep learning, and, and many more. So if you don't have the knowledge, but you think for your application that that would be cool. So I have to share my screen again. Uh, then uh, contact them and, and then they can help you. They also do the Android uh, support for our uh, uh, modules. So they have actually an Android for the TK1. Uh, also with, with a camera, actually with a, a higher end camera. So I can also show you that uh, short. So. Uh, so here you can see our evaluation board with a TK1 module and you see the, the camera. Uh, connected there over HDMI first and then a CSI adapter and you can see Android running on that module and the camera running and you see it's, it's pretty nice uh, uh, quality. Then uh, other partners, Sighthound, uh, also in this deep learning and they, they focus on a face detection and they have software which can run in the cloud so they had that cloud model at the beginning they have that but you can also bring it uh, uh, to the device uh, they quite uh, good in that so I will uh, show you a, a demo uh, from, from, from them so you see at the beginning you will see the training so the, the it learns the face from all sides with, with sunglasses and so on and, and then later it, it really can detect people, it know who is who and it also detects if, if somebody uh, uh, doesn't fit in. Uh, and they also have a, have a tool where it just can direct to that on the TK1, uh, a demo you can log in via web browser and then learn your, your faces uh, and so on. So if, if you are interested in more about that, uh, for all the partners, uh, just get in touch with us. Then the last one is also a partner called Aerial Guard. So we just started wor uh, working with them. They also have solution for TK1, uh, mostly for drones and mobile robots for uh, uh, object uh, avoidance. So you don't fly into things, it can find uh, the best path through trees and I mean that also takes advantage of this learning. It has a stereo vision camera connected uh, via USB uh, 3.0 and I also have a small video about that. So here you see the, the, the setup and then you see here the, uh, the view from a drone and then here you see the drone flying uh, between trees and it's really autonomous not flying into the tree and basically find out its way uh, between these trees and that's just with camera not with radar or any other uh, expensive uh, sensors.
so that was uh, my part. Now it will get uh, more technical. Uh, I will give the presentation to Dominic and he will talk uh, how you can install uh, the latest uh, Toradex PSP and we have uh, different variations at the moment, uh, a little bit for what they are and, and how you get really uh, started uh, if you got one of our modules. So I will then transfer to Dominic. Hello everyone, um, my name is Dominic, uh, and I'm going to show how to prepare and flash uh, three different images on the Apalis TK1. Okay. Uh, we'll start with uh, our own Toradix BSP. And there are basically two ways of getting it. You can build it yourself. Uh, we provide all of the sources and instruction on our developer uh, website. Uh, but you can also download uh, BSP packages uh, directly from our servers. Uh, our BSP is based on Angstrom uh, distribution built with Yocto. Uh, the BSP archive that you uh, can get from compiling uh, the BSP or downloading from our website contains everything you need uh, to get the board started. Uh, so we're starting from U-Boot, uh, the Linux kernel device to root file system and all of the flash scripts. Uh, when you get the module, module is already flashed with the BSP so we can uh, start work right away. Uh, you don't need to do this. Uh, you can do it if you want to update to uh, the latest BSP that we uh, released or you want to recover the board for some reason uh, or you just need uh, a fresh start. Uh, currently uh, our BSP um, for the Apple SDK1 supports hardware video uh, decoding and coding acceleration and uh, graphics acceleration. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to start uh, by downloading uh, the BSP and unpacking it. The BSP uh, right now is, uh, as you can see, uh, around 150 megabytes. Uh, that includes an entire image and uh, kernel and stuff like that. Uh, after it's uh, uh, unpacked, uh, you can basically start and create uh, an update, uh, file, update file, you can create update files. Uh, a possible update device uh, for the Apple SDK1 is the CFTP network update, or uh, you can copy uh, the update files to the SD card. Uh, this is consistent with uh, all the, our devices, uh, and you can actually create a, a single SD card that is able to update uh, all of uh, our devices. Um, with different versions of the software for different methods. Okay, so now we've created uh, the image. We've uh, used uh, you've, uh, we've used either the TFTP uh, or the SD card uh, for our destination, and we can move to the module the screen for a moment. Uh, we will focus on the serial console. This uh, uh, it's a serial console of uh, our board during the boot. If you want to update uh, the board, you need to uh, break the auto boot, and it will, it will drop you to the U-boot uh, shell. And then you basically uh, just need to issue a run set update command. This command will auto automatically detect uh, which way you're trying to update the device, either through MFC or TFTP or USB uh, device. Uh, as you can see, it detected that I have a TFTP server uh, and it started downloading, it started downloading uh, flashing scripts from it. Uh, after the flashing scripts are, uh, were downloaded, you can uh, choose whatever you want to update the entire board by running run update, or you can uh, basically run uh, update only the U-boot, kernel, uh, device tree, or file system by uh, running run update with file system U-boot. On. You can find more information on our developer uh, website. So uh, I'm updating the entire module. The running run update. Uh, this will automatically start downloading and flashing uh, the image, and it will uh, restart itself uh, after it's gone. Uh, it's done, and you should uh, boot 
uh, right into the new updated firmware. Okay. Now we'll move uh, to installing uh, NVIDIA Jetpack. Uh, this is the Ubuntu-based uh, root file system uh, that NVIDIA provides with all of the CUDA, uh, VisionWorks, uh, deep learning stuff, uh, including multiple demos and samples. Mm. We're looking uh, for a way to integrate all of the NVIDIA binaries into our uh, DSP, but uh, we're not yet there. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, NVIDIA Jetpack is much uh, bigger than uh, our BSP. Uh, so, in case you want to, uh, you're using a lot of space, uh, this is something to consider. So, to install an NVIDIA Jetpack, uh, you do need Ubuntu 14.04. Uh, um, you can do it in the virtual machine. Uh, that's actually uh, what I'm using for uh, this demo. I've already downloaded uh, the Jetpack L14 uh, from NVIDIA. You that needs to start running. It will encapsulate itself and present the dialog. Yeah. You go next. Uh, on the next screen, you need to verify that it's the directory you want to use. It will download a lot of data. I think about uh, a little less than 20 gigabytes. Uh, so you need to uh, have uh, enough space on your device in this uh, path. Uh, now it will prepare and give you options of what you, do you want to install. Uh, so here you can see all of the options. Uh, I do recommend uh, starting with the standard install. Uh, this will include most of the uh, vision works, CUDA, and sample stuff, uh, as well as uh, our Ubuntu image. So basically, uh, I just click next and accept terms and conditions. And it will start uh, downloading and installing stuff. So I'm going to fast forward through it. Yeah, uh, that's a, a lot of files to download, so it will take uh, some time for you. Okay, once the install is complete, you can proceed to the next point. Uh, this is uh, actually getting the files to the device. Uh, unfortunately, since uh, the Jetpack installer is designed for the Jetson board from NVIDIA and our boards are a bit, uh, are a bit different, uh, we need to uh, generate our own images for Flash and Flash them using uh, Toradex uh, update script. So I'm going to do it right now. We need to open a new console. I've created a, a new, uh, I'm uh, going to pack uh, uh, the, file, the root file system created by the Jetson installer, uh, so I can use it later with our BSP. Yeah, after that, uh, you will need our BSP. Uh, you can download it, of course. That's what I'm going to do. And now we need some packets, of course. Uh, after you've done with unpacking, uh, you need to uh, basically we need to replace the existing root file system that is provided with the BSP uh, with the one that Jetson installer is, cre is created. Uh, so I'm going to uh, change name uh, of the existing. Uh, root file system. 
and, and then unpack our Jetpack uh, reply system in place. Okay, since uh, our update script uh, are relying on a very specific okay, uh, size, uh, size of the image that we have, we need to increase uh, free size of it. And because we're increasing from 150 megabytes for our images to uh, over 2 gigabytes for the NVIDIA image, it will give us a little more free space while first, during first boot. Uh, we also need <coughs> uh, to include an ETC issue file uh, because we are using this one uh, to determine which uh, module the image is made for. So I'm just uh, using Apple STK1 uh, as a module. And right now we can generate the update files. It's, yeah. And from now on, uh, the procedure is the same uh, as with the PSP. We have the files for update. You can use the TFTP or SD card. And uh, so yeah, once you select that, what we want to use, we put to the module, uh, run set update. And the module once again will uh, recognize that I'm using TFTP and start downloading update scripts. Once again, I'm doing run update uh, for the update of the whole board. And uh, yeah, this uh, time it will take uh, a lot more time uh, than with uh, our BSP image. Uh, but it will finish and you will once again reboot the SOC and start booting uh, our image. Yeah, you can see that it's reset. And it's starting. Yeah, during the after the first boot, uh, I would recommend uh, running resize file system uh, to occupy the entire uh, EMMC. Uh, this will happen automatically on our BSPs, and once you do uh, do it, uh, you can reboot the board and you can start uh, the next part of the TK1 Jetson installation. You need to go back to the Jetson uh, Jetpack installer and uh, click Next. Yeah, it will start uh, creating an um, environment for the install, uh, like sending a network, uh, uh, on the host uh, for the DHCP and um, creating images uh, for update. Uh, after the Jetson install is uh, ready to install images, uh, will ask you yeah it will ask you to put the device in USB recovery mode you are uh, you mustn't do that uh, this uh, set of instructions is only is only for the Jetson TK1 board uh, we are we've already flashed our devices using our BSP scripts uh, so basically you need to press enter here and leave our device booted and in Ubuntu. Uh, it will, uh, the Jetpack installer will recognize that it's unable to connect uh, after trying to do it a few times. And actually, we'll continue without any problems. Yeah. 
Yeah, so as you can see, uh, it, it says that it failed to turn to the right, and uh, you can press enter uh, to try again, and it will uh, fail again, and then try to uh, we'll try to uh, find uh, our jetpack device. Uh, still, uh, since it's not uh, just one, it was it's not going to able it's not going to be able to do it automatically. Uh, so here you need to uh, choose manual entry for the IP address. After you selected that, you will have a uh, prompt when you can uh, input the device address. I'm checking it on the board right now. Yeah, so we know our IP. We know that default password and username for Ubuntu is Ubuntu and password Ubuntu. Uh, so I'm entering in here. Yeah, and after a while, uh, it will uh, connect to the board over SSH and will start uh, copying uh, dev files and running updates uh, to get all of the necessary files uh, on the board. After installing uh, all of the packages, uh, as you can see on, on the list, it will uh, start current compiling game work samples uh, and CUDA sample. Uh, it does take uh, a lot of time. Uh, so be prepared for that. Yeah, uh, after the install uh, is complete, uh, you basically have uh, that's the Ubuntu user um, home directory. You can see uh, we have GameWorks, OpenGL samples, and Video CUDA samples, and VisionWork samples. And I'm going to uh, right now. I'm going to show uh, the VisionWork samples. You can also uh, look uh, see it on YouTube. OK, uh, this is the screen running on our uh, EVO boards with the 2K1 on it. Uh, this is a VisionWorks uh, demo showing uh, image, well, uh, a car recognition using single camera. Uh, you can switch between different views. Uh, for example, uh, the point cloud for the recognized objects. Uh, we can turn on uh, fences, so it will try to recognize where are the boundaries that you are uh, not uh, allowed to enter, because you will bump into other cars. Yeah, you can see this here. Yeah, uh, this demo is uh, running on. Uh, just two cars and not fully utilizing them. Uh, it's also using a uh, video encoder uh, and a few CUDA cars. Uh, so it's actually uh, not very taxing. You can, we have a lot of uh, free resources uh, on the CPU uh, for uh, much more elaborate demo applications. Mm, and the other demo I'd like to show uh, is uh, a GPU demo. So that's uh, Sorry for that. Yeah, uh, the GPU demo. You can also find it on YouTube. Uh, it runs natively on TK1, as you can see. You have all translucency and reflections, and uh, different level, different surfaces. Yeah. Uh, it's very fluid. It runs at constant 40 frames per second. Uh, as you can see, the UI is very responsive. OK, and uh, the other demo what I have uh, is a camera demo from, uh, we have a password camera from one of our partners. It's a full HD uh, camera capable of uh, 112 frames per second. Uh, it's a USB 3.0 camera. Uh, so uh, you can see here. Uh, this is camera. This is natively running on TK1. Uh, it's a full HD image with uh, 112 frames, which is effectively uh, over 250 megabytes per second of bandwidth through uh, USB 3.0 up to a screen with video recorder. So that's 
uh, and that still leaves us uh, over two cars, two unused cars uh, on the arm, and a lot of uh, CUDA to do video uh, recognition and other uh, computer vision stuff. The final setup for today uh, is our full open source demo or setup. So uh, if you want to, you can run the latest mainline kernel and the Nuvo open source driver on the TK1. Uh, it will give you uh, hardware accelerated graphics as well as hardware accelerated desktop, uh, whatever Western or Lama. Uh, the demo is based on Arch uh, Linux distribution. Uh, so I'm standing with installing dependencies. <coughs> uh, you can find all of the information on uh, NVIDIA GitHub page, and there is uh, an article coming on our developer uh, uh, website uh, for how to uh, achieve the mainline with Nuvo on Apple STK1. Okay, so after all of the prerequisites I installed, uh, I'm actually downloading uh, NVIDIA uh, repo uh, bundle uh, for the Tegra Nuvo root file system. Uh, since the, uh, the current Apalis uh, K1 module is uh, the device tree for it is already mainlined, uh, you can actually uh, run this script without any modification. The on the um, no modification code. There is going to be a minor modification in in code things that I will show you later. Yeah, we need to uh, expose uh, our current for, uh, directory to the code variable for the scripts to work. And basically, we're starting with downloading uh, Arch Linux root file system. Uh, next, we're running download just to see. Uh, that will download appropriate uh, cross compilers that are required. Okay, after the tool chain is uh, downloaded and installed successfully. All right, I've already downloaded the system, so and you can run, you can prepare file system. It will uh, Update it, install all the up in Q, uh, un uh, run it in QM and install all uh, required packages. Uh, after that, we need to modify the build kernel uh, script for, uh, because uh, our DSP is using U images instead of Z images. That way, we need to change the image type and also include uh, load address, uh, which for our module is uh, uh, 8 and uh, zero, zero, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we can now build the kernel. Uh, so this, as I said, the Apache STK1 support is already in mainline uh, kernel. Uh, there is our device tree there. Um, so the U image you generate here and the device tree that will be included within the image is all that you need. Uh, after the Linux, the kernel build successfully, you can move to the Nuvo driver building. And then we need some uh, extra packages like Vigret, DRM. Uh, I'm also going to build KMS Cube uh, to verify that uh, everything is the 3D graphics is working correctly and uh, install Western. There's also a set of scripts uh, for running for building uh, X server. 
if you uh, really want to. Basically, uh, this will create a, a file, root file system and uh, kernel and device to images that we can use, uh, again, with our BSP uh, for flashing. So once we uh, build the Western, we go to the out directory, and we'll once again um, create uh, a tar archive with our root file system. Download the DSP, unpack it, uh, change the root file system name, and unpack and uh, well basically replace our root file system with uh, the Arch. Uh, file system that we have generated from the Nubo installer. Uh, now there is going to be extra step compared to the Jetson stuff. We need to update the uh, kernel uh, image and device tree uh, because we are not going to use the 3.10 that we supply with our PSD, but uh, going to use mainline generated by the installer. Uh, so here I creating some files that are required and links that are required by our update scripts to generate a proper image for flashing. And after this is uh, ready, you can generate an uh, issue file, etc. issue file, so we can refer so the other script will recognize our work, and the tool file system is created for it. And after that is ready, you can generate update images. Yeah, so the images are generated. You can flash it using uh, SD card or the network TFTP methods. Uh, just go to the board, run set updates, run updates, and after the boot, you will have jets. Uh, you will have uh, full open source Arch based and uh, Linux running on the, our board with uh, GPU acceleration, so smooth uh, UI and no, uh, a little CPU load uh, for the UA. Yeah, that's uh, that's it for the, uh, this part. I showed you how to install uh, and create, prepare and install three different images uh, on our board. That's uh, Ubuntu with Jetpack, full open source art-based distribution with mainline kernel, and uh, our own BSP. Uh, we can now move to question and answer section. Yeah, I see here uh, one question about the availability and the price of the module. So from starting today, you can actually order the TK1 uh, on, in our web shop. Uh, we expect shipping in about uh, two weeks mm, here in the US. And the price for single quantities is 219 US dollar. And in the price of 1k a year, it's uh, one, 175 US dollar. And you can actually see all the prices for volume and all the steps and our, our website, so we are um, quite transparent. Then I think we also had a question about DSI uh, display interface. Maybe Dominic, you can uh, 
And yeah, so we actually have HDMI, uh, EDP, uh, so embedded display ports, uh, DSI up to quad channel, uh, and single lane LVDS uh, available on, on the TQ1 module. Uh, they may not be available simultaneously, uh, so we need to check uh, with the possible max options. Then uh, all the questions are about the heat, so if you need a fan. Um, we expect that most application, uh, if they go in volume, uh, will be fanless. However, the module uh, generates quite some heat if you fully push it. And we definitely recommend if you uh, buy a module uh, to get our uh, heat sink. If you uh, really plan to push it, and, and especially in evaluation, if you don't really want to have uh, worry about the temperature, you also can uh, add a fan. So all our carrier boards uh, have uh, a three-pin uh, motherboard connector uh, for a fan. But also, I mean, the module is new, so we expect there is some optimization in, in power consumption and also when you do your final design, I mean there's a way for example to, to connect the module, the heat spread it directly with the case of a device uh, to get rid of the heat. Uh, we also will update our uh, developer website with much more uh, information about the, the thermal and the use cases we already test and, and, and tips for that. Okay, so I see another question. Uh, question is can the GPU be split between multiple applications? Uh, so yeah, basically you can run multiple uh, OpenGL or CUDA application. You know, there will be some overhead, uh, but it will be quite minimal. Okay, there is another question. If you plan to release a Windows Embedded Compact for the TK1, um, no, we, we, we don't uh, at the moment. So that will be actually the first Toradex module not supported Windows Embedded Compact. I mean, it's not uh, impossible to get it running, of course. Uh, the problem is really the, the very nice thing about TK1 is the GPU. And Windows CE is really not ideal if you want to do GPU computing and things like that. You, you, ha you don't really have CUDA and things like that. What we are actually discussing is if you want to bring Windows 10 IoT Core uh, on that module. So if you have any feedback or you feel you have a use case where you would like to use Windows 10 IoT Core on a TK1, uh, please get back, back to us. Uh, the image I showed with the Arch, uh, so the mainline calendar fast mobile driver, uh, can be used with uh, Ubuntu as well, uh, but that's you know an uh, unofficial open source driver. Uh, right now, the NVIDIA is not uh, supporting uh, Ubuntu 16.04, uh, and we are based on the Jetpack from NVIDIA. So just to make clear here, the question was, will you have support for Ubuntu 16.04 with OpenGL 4.0? Uh, related to the G CPU GPU memory transfer. Uh, so is there a specific setup required to make it a unified GPU CPU memory to transfer data between the two? Mm, uh, so I would recommend using the Jetpack because it gives you all of the mm, tool chain uh, for the CUDA and computing. Uh, but if you uh, want to just uh, write it pretty much bare metal in, in Linux, uh, you can use it. Uh, you can use Nubu driver or our PSP. Uh, but to get the CUDA and all of the OpenCV for Tegra, uh, you do need uh, uh, NVIDIA system and all of their binaries. Okay, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, we will follow up with an email where you can find uh, the recording of the webinar. And so you can rewatch the, uh, the part, especially of Dominic, uh, if you couldn't uh, follow. And of course, you find also this information how to install these different uh, BSPs on our developer website.